Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy, Kevin Forte, and we have a very interesting topic to go over today. The Vegas Golden Knights. The Golden Knights could be seeing some serious change to the organization this year. Kelly McCrimmon, Bill Foley, this the brass of this organization has made it clear if they are not having success, they are going to make moves and they are not going to shy away from that. And considering that they didn't make the postseason for the first time in franchise history, the Vegas Golden Knights may be in store for a pretty interesting summer. So what led to the Golden Knights? Um, really sort of failure this season. And uh, this was from when they missed the playoffs. So Timo Meyer said a few of the guys on the team got text messages from friends and players on other teams around the league today. And they knew other teams were definitely rooting for them to win that game in Vegas, which they ended up coming back to win. Um, this is really bad too. Uh, this is, uh, no shot. The fans were showing Vegas. Their season was over before the shootout was even done. So basically there was a picture of a guy behind the bench, um, in Chicago when they were playing the Blackhawks, uh, to do that shootout. There was a guy behind the bench and he's pointing at his phone showing that their playoff hopes had been smashed because I think Dallas was in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken, and Dallas had won that game. And that was the nail in the coffin for Vegas. And um, we know how things went from, from that point. So with that said, what's next for Vegas? What kind of moves can they make? Now, to this point, a lot of people weren't sure if we would even see Pete DeBoer behind the bench. Now, at this point, again, at the time of the video being made, um, Pete DeBoer is still in Vegas. Um, so I don't think that's something they're going to touch at this rate. At this rate, they've kind of said we're going with with Pete DeBoer next year. Um, so this is kind of an interesting stat for you guys. So the final cap hit for the Vegas Golden Knights is the second highest salary payment to the entire National Hockey League, only behind the Montreal Canadiens, which I just talked about. So the final cap hit for the Vegas Golden Knights, mind you, the 17th or 18th best team in the National Hockey League, right? In terms of their overall record, missing the postseason, they have spent $92 million, $76,943 on this really failure of a team. And I know there's a lot of Golden Knights fans that will say, well, things didn't go well for us. We... Had a lot of bad breaks, injuries, Leonard getting hurt, Stone out of the lineup, Eichel out of the lineup. We didn't start the season with Jack Eichel. Um, it was a tough year. I'll give you that. But even when the guys were healthy in the lineup, something seemed off for Vegas. And when you look at the team overall, we're looking at some guys that probably Vegas would like to shed some salary and maybe get some draft capital back. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go get a first-round pick from somebody, but maybe they would get a first-round pick for some of these guys in order to flip them to get players that are ready now after they get the draft pick, right? Because chances are we're not seeing a lot of teams, let's say, I'm just giving you an example of the first guy we're going to talk about. Let's say they trade Riley Smith. Riley Smith for a guy of a similar player, but just needed a change of scenery we're not going to probably see that trade it's probably going to be the trade where we see riley smith for a draft pick and then that draft pick gets utilized to pick up that player they want if that makes sense i'm trying to make that pretty simple for you guys um so that's the first rumor we're going to get to and that's from elliot friedman there have been some conversations on a potential extension between riley smith and the golden knights now again the reason we're talking about riley smith is his contract situation. So Riley Smith is on the injured reserve right now. One of many players on the LTIR this season. Uh, he's 31 years old and he's getting paid $5 million. His contract does end this summer. So the belief was for Vegas that, you know, they didn't have to worry about trading him at the deadline because, well, they were going to be a playoff team. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for them. They missed the postseason. And we're going to see Riley Smith here, um, unfortunately, you know, for Vegas, maybe just leaving the team this summer. 
So they got to figure out what they're going to do with Riley Smith. I assume they're going to try to keep him. But again, when you spent the money that you have, you're going to have to move some guys out in order to get that to work. So that's going to be interesting. So that's money coming off. Laurent Brossois, 29-year-old defense uh, goaltender. He still has another year left on his contract, $2 million. And that's going to matter and be important. I'll get to that back in a second. So Riley Smith, they want to keep. This is from Kevin Allen. The Vegas Golden Knights could consider trading goaltender Robin Leonard. Leonard took a lot of heat, uh, especially with the way things kind of ended for him. Um, you know, the fan base kind of turned their back on him, which is really, you know, it kind of sucks. And I get, you know, it's a competitive market that's passionate, wants to win, but y- you can't really blame Leonard here. It- it- that's not really fair. Um, but that's how this stuff works. That's how this stuff works. And again, when you don't perform, that's what's going to happen. So Leonard's contract isn't really the best either, especially when he's having this many injury issues. He's 30 years old and he's getting paid for the next three years, $5 million per season. So that's pretty expensive for Robin Leonard. Um, and he'll be 33, 34 by the time that deal is over. Again, that's going to that one might sting, especially when you have Logan Thompson coming in. Now, the good news is his contract doesn't end till the same summer as Robin Leonard, which is 2025. So they have a lot of control over Logan Thompson. So we're and that's why we're coming back to Brossois. If they were to trade Robin Leonard, they could technically go with Logan Thompson and Laurent Brossois next year. But they didn't play the best themselves. So does it really matter? Maybe they save this, you know, 5 million. They put that toward re-signing a guy like Riley Smith and they still have some goalies. Maybe not to the level of Leonard, but guys that can, that, you know, again, when you're a cap team, this is sort of what happens. And they were really gunning for it this year. That's kind of, I think it's going to kind of kick them in the ass here. So that's the goaltending. I could see them moving on from Leonard again and going with Brossois and Thompson next year. Defense. Defense is interesting here as well because for the most part, we're not going to see much happen. Uh, The only guy that his contract isn't past 2023 is Dylan Coughlin. And I don't think that's really that big of an impact. Uh, You know, he's 24 years old. He's got some term. In terms of guys that are injured, though, you do have Nick Hague, who I think most people would consider as a good goal, a good defenseman. His contract is up this summer, so that's going to be a big defenseman they have to lock up. Uh, and Jake Bischoff, I remember watching him when he came from the University of Minnesota, played for the Bridgeport Islanders for a couple games, and he went in the expansion draft with J.F. Berube to Vegas. So Jake Bischoff, really not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, Nick Haig, again, that's, that's a guy to look at here. Um, and Riley Smith and Brett Howden. I don't know if they're going to keep Brett Howden. I think he's going to end up going to Europe, uh, but he has an RFA with arbitration rights. So that changes that Nick Haig does not have arbitration rights. So that changes the equation there again, giving Vegas a little bit of leverage and it might only be a two year extension there. Um, Okay, so that's really it for defense. Again, unless you're moving a Martinez, who still has two years after this season at five and a quarter million per year, that's going to be tough to move. Shea Weber's a good defenseman, but he's getting five five point two. They're not going to see him move. I think Petrangelo and Weber pretty safe. They just re-signed Brady McNabb to a three-year deal. I don't see them moving him. Zach Whitecloud could be the odd man out, but again. He's a good right shot defenseman. Do you want to move him out? They have enough left shot. You start to run into some issues with your right if you move out Zach Whitecloud. Again, in terms of depth. So uh, this is going to be kind of a a sticky situation for defense. It's not as clear as what they could really do because a lot of these guys are signed past this season, really other than Nick Haig. Um, So that's kind of it for defense. So we might not see a ton of change there again. My guy would be Martinez or Brady McNabb. And again, they just re-signed him. It's not really a good look if they trade him, but we've seen Vegas do that before. So don't consider that off the table necessarily. 
Also, I want to point out Alec Martinez does have a modified no trade clause. So that's going to make things all the more difficult if Vegas does want to make that move. Um, I'm going to look it up here real quick. I want to see what it is. Uh, Alec Martinez has uh, a 16 team no trade list and that starts this fall. Uh, and then a 12 team no trade list. So it goes down a little bit and then he eventually becomes an eight team no trade list so each season it has from a 16 team trade list this year to a 12 team trade list in the fall again so it's a little bit easier to move then it goes to an eight team trade list um in 2023 so it's actually harder to trade him no it's easier to trade him yeah so it's half the league now and then it becomes a third of the league or a quarter of the league by the time his deal is done so there's little things to look at like that. Those those are the little details, though, that could make a trade happen and a trade not happening. Okay, so that's that. Um, so now forwards. Let's get to the forwards because this one could be a little bit more interesting. Again, you have Riley Smith, the final year of his deal right now. So he is not signed to next season. That could be a problem for them. I don't think they will be as much as they want to keep Riley Smith. With all the toxic energy going around and quite frankly the lack of cap space, I don't see how they will be able to keep Riley Smith. Um, Max Pacioretty will be in the fall coming into the final year of his deal. I think that one's just going to, they're going to let that one rot. Um, I don't think he'll be moving. I, again, he's got a modified no trade clause here. So that's going to make things even more difficult. I, I just don't see it happening. Uh, he submits a 10-team no-trade list, so nothing really weird there. Um, but again, that's $7 million. That's that's expensive. Um, Mark Stone and Jack Eichel, they're not moving anywhere. Max Pacioretty's not moving. I really don't think they're going to move William Carlson. He just signed a massive, massive deal uh, that goes past 2027. So that's not happening. Jonathan Marcheseau is kind of interesting. Uh, March or so is one of the guys they got from the expansion draft, and this summer will be he will have two years left on his deal, and he's making five million dollars. So if they are that again, this may be a decision where they have to decide: do we keep March or so, or do we keep Riley Smith? And I think it will ultimately, because they have March or so signed already, it might be easier to just keep March or so. And unfortunately, you know, they're going to have to let Riley Smith walk, which sucks. But that's kind of where they're at right now. They just, they don't have the cap space. Chandler Stevenson, again, it sheds only $2.75 million. But that does mean something. They already tried to trade Dadanov. He'll be on the final year of his deal at $5 million. I don't know what they're going to do with Dadanov. Um, he submits a 10-team no-trade list, which we know will not be Anaheim because he's, you know, the Ducks are on his 10-team uh, no-trade list. So, again, the only real guys that are up here, uh, Keegan Colasar and Nicholas Waugh, they're both up for a new contract. That's bottom six depth guys. Um, Brett Howden. Um, Nolan Patrick going into the fall will be on the final year of his deal. I don't see him getting another contract. He just, it really hasn't worked for him. Um, and then looking at some of the young guys that could, cause I think ultimately Vegas is going to have to move on from some of these guys. Um, you know, I think they're going to lose, um, Riley Smith. I think they're going to lose Matthias Janmark. And I think they could be trying to move either Chandler Stevenson or Evgeny Dadanov. I think they're going to have to do that um, just to stay at the cap. Because you look at their cap space right now, uh, their cap hit next season, they have projected calorie. Yeah, they have $0 in salary cap space for, ne for next season, right? Let's. That's without re-signing Riley Smith. Without re-signing even guys like Wa and Amadio and Kolasar. They don't have the money to do that. They don't have the money to do that. So, I don't know. So, that, like I said, you're going to have to rely on some of the guys that you actually kept that you drafted. Guys like Jack Duggan, Zach Dean, Mason Primo, um, Jake LeCision. We saw him a little bit. Oh, God, Sven Berchi. That guy will not 
That guy will not go down without a fight. Brendan Brisson, who has been playing with, I think, Michigan, University of Michigan. Um, that could be a guy that maybe surprises people in camp next year. Zach Dean, Mason Primo, Duggan. Those are the guys you're looking at here in Vegas that are going to have to fill out the bottom six. This is where the Golden Knights, you can't pay your way to the top anymore. They've reached that point where they've spent all the money they had. And right now, they're going to have to shed some of that in order to keep their organization like below the cap. Um, now they could just do what they did this year, right? Use the LTIR and they don't have to move out Stevenson. They don't have to move out some of those guys, but you're going to be playing this, this basically horse to stay below the salary cap. And I think that is ultimately what hurt them. Guys being in and out and in and out of the lineup. There's no consistency. There's no flow. You're not able to build chemistry with the lines I just I think that ultimately hurt them at the end of the day. And that's when Pacioretty and Stone and Leonard came back. You were like, all right, they're back. But they haven't played in a month and a half or two months. And it's like, shit, they're not really they're not really playoff ready like teams like Dallas and you know, even for that matter, Vancouver, who kept it pretty close up until the end. Vegas had this playoff spot locked. This was their playoff spot. It was their baby to get into the 2022 playoffs, and they basically gave it away. And some fans might not like that, and I know they'll be out there. But this is a disappointment for this team. This is a team that was expected to do really good things, and they fell really short of those expectations. Um, so that's how hockey works. I mean, like we've talked about, I always talk about this. It's a hairline fracture between this team and the next team. And that's what the NHL wants. They want parity in the league. But for Vegas, uh, they paid the ultimate ultimate price here um, in terms of what happened at the end of this season. Just an utter collapse. And uh, listen, you know, people will revel in their uh, lack of success this season. I think that's just kind of the cheesy, you know, easy way to do it. Um, but I don't know. That's... Let me know what you guys think, because I think Vegas this year, it just, I'm trying to pull up their stats here, because I want to see, oh, those are some interesting looking dudes. Um, I want to pull up their stats here from this season in terms, okay, here we go. So their goals for this season, it was 12th in the league, which isn't bad, and this is where they took the hit, and this is from trading flurry. Their goals against, 248, that's 15th in the league. So their stats were not good. Compared to last year. So they were 12th and 15th in the league. Um, and then you compare that to last season. They had the third best for goals for. They scored a shit ton of goals. And their goals against was best in the National Hockey League. What do we always say? Defense wins championships. At least it punches your ticket to the playoffs. So Vegas got worse in both categories. And you could argue a lot of that is because of not enough chemistry with guys being in and out of the lineup. And flurry has gone. And maybe is some of that, you know, I hate to use like an ephemeral word here, but like the magic of the expansion draft team in 2018 is that kind of dying and going away. And I think that's true. I think, you know, the, you know, what do they call them? The... The desert of misfit toys, right? And that's what this team was when they were brought in in 2018. That sentiment is completely gone. Gerard Gallant's gone. Fleury's gone. Tuck's gone. You could probably name off 15 other guys that are gone from that team, right? It's just different, right? So let me know what you guys think. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you again next time.